You know, folks, what I do on this show is kind of dangerous in the fact that I do want to help people. And what that comes with is a frown on the faces of evil. They don't want me to do that. And I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm not talking about Google. If you've watched me long enough, you know what I'm talking about. This is a spiritual force against those who do this type of work. Whether we know anything or not, it doesn't matter. There's an agenda overall. And then there is prophecy. So I know many people right now have their concerns about 5G. The truth is we have far better, safer technology that they plan to implement that will overshadow the 5G technology. What I believe is going to happen is we will soon take a leap from the technology we have right now into some pretty wild and advanced technologies that people will be surprised by. How many science fiction movies or television shows have you seen where the world has become littered with robots or droids? A strange truth, or is it just fiction? Actually, what we have seen in fiction is not strange enough to be the truth. And this is what I want to discuss. The reality of robotic technology. Now I actually think that being able to create a humanoid robot is pretty cool. And there is really nothing wrong with building the tech itself. However, I think that what most people fear is the implementation or application of it. The AI brain. How will this technology be used? And I think people fear the possibility of either a clone army or robotic law enforcement and military soldiers. Well, we can never be too sure about what they intend to do, but I can say the robotic age is definitely upon us. You know how people always say that the technology the government has is years ahead of what we have available to the public, right? That applies to 5G, quantum computing, AI, and robotics. Let me tell you what I mean. Let's say you have this laptop computer, a special laptop. And let's say you have a friend who lives on the other side of the world who also has the same type of computer. So one day, your friend's birthday comes around and you decide to record a video of the family singing happy birthday to him. You record the video and now you want to edit the video and send it to your friend. You transfer the video to your special computer and start editing away. It takes you about two hours to edit the video because you wanted to make it look real nice and polished. It is your friend's birthday after all. So after editing, you finalize the video and save it under some type of video file. Now you're probably thinking, well, now I have to upload the video file to an email or to some drive or to the cloud so that my friend can download the file. Guess what? Your friend already has the file. Now how did that happen? That is what you call quantum entanglement. Again, this is just a theory that has conjured up more theories inside the theory. So trying to understand entanglement is going to be hard. But the best knowledge is going to come from the people who know how to use it. And those are the people like the people at CERN. People who build quantum computers have a good understanding of entanglement. However, experimenting with it can be dangerous. 
And this is what a quantum computer is capable of, in theory. I mean, there is much more to what I just described with the two laptops, but that's the idea, basically teleporting information or data. Understand, this is not some type of wireless signal, no. The moment the files were transferred to the computer, it was on your friend's computer. The moment you started editing, it was editing over on your friend's computer simultaneously, which makes hacking virtually impossible because no information is actually being sent or received, if that makes sense. It's entangled. Superposition is different. The basic idea here is that something like an electron can be in multiple quantum states of existence at once until you actually look at it or observe it or measure it. I want you all to keep something in mind. The more they can get us to focus and worry about one thing, the more they start working on something else. I see everyone looking at 5G. You know, I may have to do a more detailed video on it so that we can all know exactly what 5G is and where it's going so that we can turn our attention to other things that may take us by surprise if we lose sight of them. They're not stupid. They already know that people in general are going to reject something like a robot army. They already reject robot workers to a degree. Besides, people have no problem destroying machines. They would just get torn to pieces. So while there are some people thinking that they're building a robot army, they're working on something else, something far better, something you would accept. The best robot is really one that does not require a body. If it needs a body, it can use one as a vessel. You'll see them mostly where the use for them is practical. See, you don't spend all your time working on the robot, you spend it working on the robot's brain. But artificial intelligence is a topic for another conversation as I want to stay on robotics. So what I would like to do is go over some of the things they're doing in robotics. We know robotics goes way back thousands of years. It's not a new concept. The only real fear I think people have with any robot is the brain of the robot. So one of the reasons I keep bringing us back to ancient times is to illustrate and emphasize that we are repeating ancient history almost to the letter. It's uncanny, the similarities. And I'm really referring to a time before the Great Deluge. So somewhere between 8 and 11,000 years ago. Somewhere between the last ice age and the Great Deluge. Scientists know that these two events occurred. They are trying to figure out the in-between and even though they don't say so, they do take into account any ancient record referring to that time period. So you have that era of technology and you have a rebirth of some of that technology in ancient Greece and Egypt, Babylon, Sumer, Central America. Then something happened again that buried all of that. How many of you are familiar with the Automata of ancient Greece? There's a great book that you can read. It's called Gods and Robots, The Ancient Quest for Artificial Life by Adrian Mayer. And I do recommend reading this book. There are a lot of interesting things in there that make you think. I want to tell you a story of Talos. You can find the story out of the Argonautica by Apollonius of Rhodes. It talks about Jason and the Argonauts. And how, with the help of Princess Medea, they were able to overcome Talos, a giant robot, created by the god of invention and blacksmithing, Hephaestus, for the great king Minos. And Talos, the man of bronze, as he broke off rocks from the hard cliff, stayed them from fastening hawsers to the shore when they came to the roadstead of the Dix Haven. So Jason and the Argonauts come ashore, and as they try to secure their ships, this bronze giant starts to throw boulders at them. He was of the stone of bronze, 
of the men sprung from ash trees and last left among the sons of the gods and the son of Kronos gave him to Europa to be the warder of Crate and to stride round the island thrice a day with his feet of bronze. The men sprung from ash trees were basically a race of nymphs, Nephilim beings, whatever you want to call them. They were both violent and strong and wore bronze armor. And this robot was designed just to pace the island and throw boulders at people. That's all it was programmed to do. Now in all the rest of his body and limbs was he fashioned of bronze and invulnerable. But beneath these new by his ankle was a blood red vein. And this, with its issues of life and death, was covered by a thin skin. So the heroes, though outworn with toil, quickly backed their ship from the land in sore dismay. And now far from Crate would they have been born in wretched plight, distressed both by thirst and pain, had not Medea addressed them as they turned away. Hearken to me, for I deem that I alone can subdue for you that man, whoever he be, even though his frame be of bronze throughout, unless his life too is everlasting. But be ready to keep your ship here beyond the cast of his stones, till he yield the victory to me. Now that's a pretty badass thing for Medea to do, but they did consider her to be a sorceress, and she also knew the truth about the robot. And what they describe here is the oil line running through his ankle. It was exposed. Thus she spake, and they drew the ship out of range, resting on their oars, waiting to see what plan unlooked for she would bring to pass. And she, holding the fold of her purple robe over her cheeks on one side, mounted on the deck. And Aeson's son took her hand in his and guided her away along the thwarts. And with songs did she propitiate and invoke the death, spirits, devourers of life, the swift towns of Hades, who, hovering through all the air, swooped down on the living, kneeling in supplication. Thrice she called on them with songs, and thrice with prayers, and, shaping her soul to mischief, with her hostile glance she bewitched the eyes of Talos, the man of bronze, and her teeth gnashed bitter wrath against him, and she sent forth baneful phantoms in the frenzy of her rage. Father Zeus, surely great wonder rises in mind, seeing that desire destruction meets us not from disease and wounds alone, but lo, even from afar, maybe, it tortures us, so Talos, for all his frame of bronze, yielded the victory to the might of Medea, the sorceress. And as he was heaving massy rocks to stay them from reaching the haven, he grazed his ankle on a pointed crag, and the ichor gushed forth like melted lead. And not long thereafter did he stand towering on the jutting cliff. But even as some huge pine high up on the mountains which woodmen have left half hewn through by their sharp axes when they return from the forest. At first it shivers in the wind by night, then at last snaps at the stump and crashes down. So Talos, for a while, stood on his tireless feet, swaying to and fro, when at last all strengthless fell with a mighty thud. For that night there in Crate the heroes lay, then, just as dawn was growing bright, they built a shrine to Manoa Athena and drew water and went abroad so that first of all they might by rowing pass beyond Solomon's height. Right now the industry leaders in robotics are mainly working on smart machines that can be used as tools or equipment. There are over 26 major companies and all of them build simple smart machines. For manufacturing, medicine, food, taxis, avatar replacements. Not to mention all the software bots we have come across multiple digital platforms. 
So robots are very integrated into our society already. That humanoid form, only a few companies are working on that. And they are getting there. You know, way back in the day, the Soviets and Germans were working on some pretty wild experiments. Especially with biorobotics. Ever hear of the Kali Biobot? Apparently they took a dog's head and put it on a robot body to utilize the brain. I'm going to continue this discussion because there are some crazy past experiments that I want to discuss. So we can see examples of what they were trying to accomplish back then and now. And we'll talk all about that in part two. Until then folks, it looks like it's going to be a busy week or two. Hang in there. Stay tuned, the next presentation is around the corner. Until then everyone, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.